This is Scott Richman and Arnie Sherman. You're listening to What Do You Know on News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 101.5 FM. Good morning, Arnie Sherman. How are you? Good morning, Scott. We have a great show this morning. Yeah. We have uh, Grizz great Mark Mariani joining us. I can't wait. Chicago Bear. You know, he was on uh, during the Super Bowl and predicted the Broncos were going to win. He did. So we're going to bring him in and talk about uh, being in minicamp and uh, what the prospects for the Bears look like this year and how he's doing in the competitive environment. But it led me to think a little bit about how many professional athletes Montana has produced. You know, we're a little state. We have a million people. We've just reached a million people. Right, right, right. And you know we're uh, we're far removed from uh, you know urban land where a lot of uh, sports legends you know are produced. True. But we've had our share, and I thought we'd before Mark got here we'd do a little bit of recap. I think it's a of good what's idea. Going on here. So here are some of the people that Montana has produced over the year. Arguably the most famous is Dave McNally. Right. The pitcher for uh, you know Baltimore Orioles spent 13 years in the major leagues. Four-time 20-game winner. Okay. Montana resident. Montana guy. Okay. Phil Jackson. We all know about Phil Jackson. Legendary Phil Jackson. Nick. Yeah, now with the uh, Nick. Back Laker. with the Knicks. Lakers. Right. The Guru. Chicago. Uh, yeah. The Zen Master. Zen Master. From Flathead, right? That's right. The legend of the fall, Dave Dickerson. Uh-huh. From, uh, you know, played at the University of Montana in the Can- uh, Canadian uh, Sports Hall of Fame. Uh you know, a, a Grizz great, everybody who's ever watched Grizz football compares everyone to Dave Dickinson. Jerry Kramer, Green Bay Packers, three-time Pro Bowl, 19 years, probably the highest rated person wow. not in the Pro Bowl, you know, not in the football hall. Is that fame. right? Yeah. I mean, 19 years, three times on the Green Bay Packer championship teams. Dan Mortensen, who was the all-around world champion saddle bronc. Okay. And, uh, and uh, you know... Uh, a number of times in the uh, rodeo sphere, had, was a world champion. Uh, Timmy Houck, who was uh, uh, ten years with the Eagles, played uh, played uh, high school ball in Montana. The brother of uh, Bobby Houck, Grizz coach, coach for the, for the Grizz, uh, you know, for a few years. Right. Eric Burgos, who won the uh, was in the Olympics, uh, won the. Uh, Aerial skiing in the eight nine it was at ninety eight yeah yeah ninety eight Olympics okay so we have a pretty good roster for such I mean, a small population and that's not all of them that's just ones that are our listeners who are active wouldn't. NFL players right now we from probably, Montana well either who are from Montana or who have played in Montana there's probably I think ten or eleven that I can think of off the top of my well, head playing with Mark right now I'm curious right well here are the guys that I know of We've okay got Jordy Tripp right who's a UM graduate who. Uh, Got drafted by Miami and is playing for uh, Jacksonville. Jack, right, Jacksonville. You got Chase Reynolds who played here. He was he played during the same time Mark was here, and he's uh, he's with the Rams. Okay, along with Trumaine Johnson, okay. who's not from Montana but played here for his collegiate career. Okay, and uh, is now a uh, franchise player for the Rams. I mean, he signed a sixteen million dollar year contract. Wow, he may be the highest paid athlete ever to come out of Montana. You got Brock Coyle playing for the Seattle Seahawks. Right. Has a Super Bowl ring because he was on the team when they won okay. the Super Bowl ring. You have Brock Osweiler up in the Flathead who played at Arizona State. Right. Who's now with the uh, Texans but got a Super Bowl ring last year for the Bronco. Broncos. You got um, Colt. Colt Anderson who's with the Buffalo Bills along with uh, Dan Carpenter who is a player. That's a lot of players here. that are active. I mean, yeah, Jimmy Wilson, San Diego. I think the last was San Diego Chargers. You got Montana State's uh, Dane Edwards. So, I mean, you have 11 or 12, and not including some of the young guys. Tyrone Holmes was just signed by, by the Jacksonville Jaguars and will be joining uh, uh, Jordy Tripp. So, and there are a few others that are on taxi squads or in practice teams. And so we have a pretty strong collection that have, uh, that have graduated here over the last 10 years. Given that we're, you know, a Division Two team, impressive. And uh, Mark just walked in, and we're going to bring him in, and we're going. It's a perfect lead-in for Mr. Mariani. Mark, we're on the air. 
We just were talking about you. How are you, Mark? I hope it was all good. Right, right. we're going to go right into it. I'm going to take a break. Everybody knows, all of our listeners know who, who Mark Mariani is. Yes. But, Mark, we were just re- recounting. There are 11 or 12 Grizz yeah. that are playing in the NFL. We're a factory. That's what uh, we how do. does that happen? Huge. How know, does that happen I, in a place like Montana? for Coach Stitt to recruit like that. I mean... Just, just you know, they're, he's competing against the SEC, the Pac-10, and hey, we're we're putting guys I, out. Every I mean, year we're putting that. We have more in the, I think, in the NFL than a lot of, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of big time school programs. Have. I give guys a lot of crap around the lunch table in the locker room <laughs> about that, but uh, yeah, we're we're doing big things, and we're not just getting there; we're sticking. We're, I know it's we're, amazing. Uh, we're sticking on rosters, and we're right. We're making plays, and so it's exciting, man. I always check the box score after every weekend to see how uh, all the other how guys the other guys are doing. I know, and we do too. Well, we all do too because. Now there's so many of them across all the different no, it teams. it takes a while. Yeah. And, and you, what are you in town for? Tell everybody what you're in town for. I'm in town to uh, hang out and relax <laughs> in, in Big Sky Country, uh, right. most importantly. But no, we uh, a bunch of us came back. Well, who there's was a, there? There's a big group. Um, Colt Anderson's here. Jordy Tripp's here. Chase Reynolds is here. Uh, the the hairy man uh, Brandon Fisher is back. In oh town. wow! So he's he's coaching for the Rams. He's back, man. I'm I'm missing. I think Brock's coming back. There's a whole crew. I, I got the uh-huh. pocket, but uh, and it was a great time, awesome time, and to see all the guys and out supporting the Missoula Sports Commission, right? Um, which bring, brings uh, events and activities to the community and and tries to boost uh, traffic through the streets of Missoula that way. And uh, so it was exciting. Great. What, what I admire about you, among many things that I admire, is is the fact that you still come back and keep in touch with your roots. You come that. back, you know, to Haver, you, you know, your mom and dad still live here. Oh, your yeah. sister's in Chicago with you now, but but you still come back for every time you're asked to come back for an event in Montana. I'll tell you what, man, it's it's not it's not a it's not something that I have to do. It's something that I want to do. I love to do. Um, coming back to Missoula, to Haver, to anywhere in the state of Montana, I always go up to Flathead and you know enjoy enjoy uh, the lakes and rivers and stuff. Um, it's just it's a privilege more than anything, and uh, you know the work that a bunch, me and a bunch of the other guys have put in uh, to be able to do these things and to be able to give back and to be able to have that platform is um, is a testament to hard work, but it's also something that we absolutely love to do. So it's uh, it's not it's not necessarily work. It's more fun than anything. And your wife Carly goes along with all of this. Oh yeah, because she's, she's a California girl originally. Oh yeah, I, I always got to have a plus one. <laughs> I got a, I got a plus one. I got a little puppy dog who who tries to tag along. I've seen your puppy. He's very cute. <laughs> that know, that puppy's a, a very cute. Good to small, have a puppy. I have a small obsession, but no, yeah, it's, uh, things are going really well. And and uh, like I said. We uh, we busted uh, we busted our butts for the last few months up in Chicago, and now we have a um, five six week break, right. and I'm starting off my vacation in Missoula. I'm going back to Haver for a little bit, and I'm just stoked, man. I'm excited, get some fresh air, and uh, you know relax, get some R and R. It's exciting. So you just finished mandatory mini camp right on the 14th to the 16th. How was that mini camp? Yeah, it was it was great. Things are going really well. We had uh, you have some new coaches too, right? That you're doing. Remember the with. last time we spoke, you were sure what was going on you yeah what you had a couple of uh, interest from some other parties right absolutely san diego yeah. i was a free agent this year yeah right there was a lot of west coast teams for some reason the west, <laughs> the west coast was calling um and what happened tell us what happened so after we spoke i think we spoke when like in well, Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, Super Bowl right. right that's yep. right you made a good prediction you predicted the broncos yes yes yes, yes you did for me right old peyton came through for me i appreciate that <laughs> so then what happened so then after that your agent calls remember we were talking a lot about the agent yeah right. no th- things things got crazy there for a little bit and right free agency came can be um, a little bit nerve wracking, but it was it's mostly exciting. And I thought last year I put myself in 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 a good place uh, to have to have some some teams calling, and that's what happened. And um, you know my, the teams at the top of the list actually actually rang the phone and and they were up there. But wow. honestly, the Chicago Bears was really where I wanted to be. It was it's it's a familiar territory. Um, things are going really well, and uh, you know we, we were running the same offense finally for the first time in my career. I have the same offense two years in a row. It's just mind blowing to think I'm going on year seven. I've never played in the same offense for two years. Is that right? It changes the game, and it's it, it's it's exciting, man. We're doing. Uh, we're coming together, and, and things are slowing down out there, which is a good thing. Right. And uh, so Chicago is where I wanted to be uh, during that free agency time, and and luckily enough, they they gave me a chance to come back and have another opportunity to uh, chase That's this. That's fantastic. Chasing, yeah. So so there are twelve wide receivers on the roster, including yeah. um uh, um 
Marcus uh, Wilson, who got yep. injured, right? Yep. And there were a couple that are gunning for you. Oh, yeah. Including, Always. Uh, including uh, Daniel Braverman, you know, the out of Western Michigan. That's right. He reminds me, I hate to say this, a little bit of you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't came know where those of, comparisons I, are coming from. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, you know, he does remind me. He was drafted in the seventh round like you were oh, near, no the, near the back, although you were drafted, I think, 222. Yep, that's correct. And he correct. was drafted 230. You know, Pretty he, close, that's he right. had uh, 1,300 yards receiving. He's a, you know, he's a slot receiver kind of guy. Right. And, uh, and uh, so, I, you know, when you look at what is being written about, I mean, it looks like, you know, there he's, gun, he's kind of gunning for oh, you yeah. or you're gunning for him. So well, how does that make you feel? Well, here's the thing. Everybody's gunning for everybody. And yeah. so, I mean... There's 12 guys in the room, and there's nobody, there's nobody that would volunteer to give their seat up to anybody. Right. So, um, and Daniel's a great kid, man. He's a hard worker, and he does. He does re- remind me a lot of myself when I came in. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, I, I'm not one of those guys who who tries to, you know, claim my space and and, and kind of, you know, shuts off to the young guys. I, I I'll I'll help them everything they want, you know, with everything they want. If they ask questions, if they, you know, we got a lot of young guys who are returning. Well, I as remember well. Randy Moss did the same yeah, thing for you forward. so yeah i think i don't think randy moss was nervous about me taking his job <laughs> necessarily <laughs> but he was no. phenomenal to me he was probably the best teammate well, what's ever amazing had. you know to us you know time goes by so fast yeah. you are now the second oldest yeah. receiver on the roster it's crazy o- you know only eddie royal is older than you and only by That's a year correct. and we still think of you as you know the young <laughs> montana kid but you know there's a whole bunch of other guys now in their early early mid 20s that are uh, that are on the roster competing with you it came up a couple times it, it co- actually it comes up every day in, in, in meeting room uh but is it's, that right oh oh we, it, i mean you, you're only, we, we've what? heard you're every 20, joke 29 you're 29 yeah i'm an old man in the in the it, locker it's incredible. room incredible i know it's crazy i mean Seven and then seasons. these guys are guys coming in are born in like the mid to late 90s and well, right. I'm, just, I'm i'm doing the whole time thing going is this does this even make sense these guys are cra- it's you know they're so they're young and excited but I mean, it's I got a great room, and I'm excited. Like I said, I, I know now um, that it's a privilege to be sitting in one of those chairs. I think as a young rookie, second year guy, yeah. you you can you can kind of take for granted where you're at. But um, you know, going into my seventh year and having having the experiences that I've had, I really appreciate being able to do it. And um, like I said, I'm not going to be giving my seat up uh, for anybody no. if there's anything I can do about no. it. All right, you're listening to What Do You Know with Scott and Arnie, where our guest is Mark Mariani, Chicago Bear, Grizz alum, and here in town for a big uh, celebrity athlete, athlete celebrity conclave, right? Uh, yeah, over event, charity Osprey. event, a fundraiser right. event. Right. So, one, one of the things that always amazes me about the situation that you find yourself in is that you have to every day have people speculating about whether you're going to be good, whether you're going to make the team. I mean, nobody else, in the, outside of sports, there is nothing I can think of where the newspapers, you, you know, you, you Google Mark Mariani News, and there's seven articles that talk about whether you're making the team, whether you're not making the team. How can you focus when all of this noise and <laughs> yeah. chatter is going on about you and your work, your job? Honestly, it, it, it is one of the hardest things that, that, it's crazy that you have to deal with. I, I tell people all the time, it is the NFL. It is very physically challenging, um, and the time consumption. It, it is a great, um, you know, a great. A, um, it takes up a lot of your time. You you are always working physically, but mentally, it is so much more challenging than people can understand. It is it is a stressful environment. You are getting constantly evaluated everything you do is filmed and evaluated and rewatched and and every, every single pass every drop every, every action every small detail is picked apart relentlessly by first by your coaches and then by you know your coordinators and then by the pro scout and then by the GM and pretty soon you know you have sports commentators all these oh and then then the media gets a hold of it and yeah it wow. is and i and i can honestly say that i you know i've outlasted a lot of guys who are were maybe more physically gifted because mentally, uh, you just have to you have to block out the noise. Like you said, you have to focus. You have to be on your game every single day, um, or else, or else, you know. Some, I mean, it's, some it's, new it really is hard to imagine. I, I'm, uh, Scott, can you imagine one of your employees going on a sales call and there's a team of people sitting watching and critiquing yeah, everything no. they say, and that's you know, and every day scrutinized, right? And then somebody else is 
put out on the same sales call and they evaluate them to see if they're any better. Than, I mean, it really is a, a, a very unusual environment to try to be able to focus but and get your psych- job done. But sports psychology, right? Like, yep. you, how do you tune? How do you know that they're th- there? Right? You kind of accept their presence, but you're able to focus. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, th- there it's it's just like training yourself um, to run fast or to catch the ball or to you know make a move or whatever you have to train and you have to you know like you said consciously realize that this is stress you know this is part of the game right and you have to focus on not letting it get the best you you know taking the field with a clear mind um one of the things that john fox coach fox um has brought into our locker room is a lot of sports psych stuff we have an on-site um sports psychologist who, right. who does uh you know meetings and that sort of thing every single day trying to get that edge that mental edge um uh, because it's such an important a part of what we do, um, like I said, physically the game um, is in- incredibly challenging and incredibly um, time-consuming. But mentally, you can wipe that all away. Everything you've ever done physically, if you can't focus and if you can't um, have confidence when you take the field. So, I mean, it, it's just something I've learned. It, it's it's something that you know, overcoming adversity, w- w- you know, doesn't scare me anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, but it, it's something that I mean, I'm not condoning it at all. But it's something that you can understand why. A person under that much pressure, strain, scrutiny could lash out at their family, their dog Lucy. You know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you, you have a bad day, and the news, pre- the press is on you, yeah. and the coach says something bad to you, and you're worried about whether you're going to have a paycheck at the end of yeah. the. I mean, you could. I mean, there is a lot, much more stress than any other kind of job that that the average. Sports I think fan is engaged well, it, in. It's just it's it it's the it's an extremely competitive environment, and they're constantly looking to replace you. I mean, that's a GM's job. That's a coach's job is to get the best guys in the room, mm-hmm. and you're always evaluating. You're always looking who's the weakest thing, where can we improve, all this stuff. So they're always trying to be better. They're always trying to bring competition in. Right, and. If you if you get settled, you know if you get too comfortable, or if you get uh, the mindset of you know I've arrived or whatever, you know all the cliches, you're going to be gone just as fast as you got through the door. And so, I mean that. And that's do you what, see any of that at the pro level? Do you see any of your fellow uh, teammates that have you know come and gone because their attitude was not right? I see it every day. So, and why is that? Why do you think that they came to the table with that mindset versus you? Well, I I, I think I think that. It's something, like I said, that has to be learned. And sometimes you don't have that long to learn. I see. Sometimes, and, and you don't of, learn it in college, really. I mean, well, college a, lot of, is... a lot of these guys, they're, they're phenomenal athletes from the moment they put shoes on, right? right. And, and, and they're, they're uh, recruited to go to high school, you know, they're recruited to go to college. Uh, and, but then, and they're always better, you know, they're always better. They're always the star wherever they are. Yeah, when you get, when you, get you know, to the, to the NFL, everybody's great. You know, everybody's everybody's a great right, athlete. Right, right, Everyone in the room had adds value. Everyone in the ro- room is is good mm-hmm. at what they do, mm-hmm. and and so um, then you got to rely on all the stuff, everything else that you have in your toolbox. And I mean, I was extremely fortunate uh, to go be drafted by the Tennessee Titans, where they needed a return man. So <clears throat> I stuck because of the return duties. Um, and some guys, some guys are a perfect fit for one team. Mm-hmm. And just not the right fit for another team. You'll mm-hmm. see it every year where some guy gets, you know, released from one team, and then within two weeks is starting for another team. It's, it's just, up. it's just. Well, the perfect you, you example be fortunate is about running the running back for Dallas Cowboys from a couple of years ago, who was, uh, who was the NFL leading running back. I forget his name. Uh, DeMarco Murray. Uh, yeah, and then he, I mean, he's the hottest thing in the in the league, right? And yeah. then he goes to Philadelphia and nothing happens. Exactly. I mean, he's as a bust. And you see it every day. Um, you see, you see that kind of stuff. You see, uh, you also unfortunately see guys who have phenomenal ability who didn't land in the right spot and may not right. get another chance right. again. That's and, amazing. Right. And here's a guy, I mean, I'm going to go back to DeMarco for a moment because he's a stud athlete. And to have people like us saying he's a bust because, you know, well, that. You know, plays on their psyche because it's not just us; it's every sportscaster, it's every fan out there. Say, what yeah. the hell happened to this I gotta, guy? Uh, you know, if you were listening, did you listen to the post-game conference with the NBA Finals? Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear what Steph Curry was saying? Yeah. And did you hear LeBron? Steph Curry, talk about somebody who is incredibly di- hard on himself. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you're the big, you're your worst critic, or your harshest yeah. critic, or your biggest, you know, um, uh, pressure cooker, if you will. The person that puts the most pressure is yourself. 
I found his comments to be like incredible. Yeah. He is just like he was first of all he was still pissed off like right. 20 minutes later. I mean it's he's not he's never well, going to come down from that feeling cuz yeah. he was so torqued to be in that game right. and it's like the game's over. But as Michael Jordan always said, which is true, I've missed more shots in my career than I made. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, the greatest, you know, arguably the greatest basketball player of all but time. I've missed look- more. You know, and in baseball, the uh, the, uh, the stud, the most stud baseball, whoever you think it is, right. my, is batting 300. I mean, 70% of the time he's, he's no out. Could you relate to that, though? You listen to these guys comment afterwards, yeah. like a LeBron, like to step up to the plate. Like, that's a big deal. No doubt. I mean, yeah, those, those guys, it's... Watching that series was just phenomenal. I mean, just right. just any anyone that uh, you know has a liking or appreciation for sports, and even if you don't, to see to see those guys and, and, and like you said, after it was over, the intense battle that they had on the field, and then to have to have you know what you saw afterwards was just it just brings back into mind just competition, <laughs> man. These competitors, these guys who just leave it all on the court, leave it all on the field, uh, and that's why. That's why to, to 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 come back, you know. That's why, right. you know, for us Montana boys, for for small school, small town guys, you know, one double A or FCS, whatever, whatever it, is it is now, um, to be to be on that level yes. and competing like that, uh, it is so, um, you know, it is so awesome and is so, you know, I appreciate it so much and it's sure. just exceptional that that, you know, the fan in me still comes out. All the time, uh, because it's what I love, man. So I love to compete and uh, to see to see that kind of stuff. Well, you're on the field with the best of the best. I mean, there's you know 1,200 guys that that have been called out of every football player in America that yeah. are competing every week, and you're against you know the best cornerbacks. You're against the best defensive backs, and it's you know it is it is a tremendous competition. Let me ask something quickly. You were uh, in mandatory minicamp, and you don't have to report now till what the 20. Uh, the 26th, 28th. 28th, something 28th. like that. 28th, yeah. What are you going to do for the next six weeks? Besides relax a little bit, you got to get yeah. ready to go, right? Well, yeah, exactly. I, I I come back to Montana, obviously. That's a, that's a really good way to fuel up the tank. And, your touchstone. And you come back to your touchstone. No doubt. Um, but then I'll be off training. I go back to uh, California where I train with my agent and my uh, facility down there. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't take a lot of time off, even when I'm here. Uh, I work out four or five times a week, and you know it's part of the gig. It's part of the job. And you know, in the in the older days, the guys used to show up to training camp to get into shape and to get uh, right. ready for the season. And that's just not the way it is anymore. Guys just don't do that. Guys have to right. show up to training camp uh, ready to roll and ready to go compete. And uh, that's what I'll do on the 27th. I'll just c- continue to train and, and be ready to go when training camp starts. What do your friends do when you come home? Like, you're coming back to Montana. You haven't seen some of these people, I don't know, in how long. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I try to keep in touch uh, with the people around me. I a lot of a lot of my friends, we go out, um, you know, and, and play some golf or do right. whatever. Go hit the hot spots, you know. Right. That's what I love about you know you coming do. back to Missoula, coming back to Havers. Not a lot, not a lot changes. I still know my way around, so you know what I mean. It's it's been it's been uh, six Haver, seven too, years. You're now. like when you go to Haver, it must be like you know. Oh, it's awesome! I I I, I enjoy yeah, so much tape. going back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. they must love it. Well, oh, they do. They do. <laughs> they have to. Well, no, because so how of often? You. You're the highest paid person that ever came out of half from Montana. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that, but no, it's 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 one it's it's special for me um, because I am so attached to my hometown. Yes, um, and I and I love um, love where I come from, and I love. Um, growing up in Haver and, and being being from Montana, playing for the Grizz, doing all those things, uh, it means a lot to me. It's something that I don't you know take lightly. It's it's uh, something that's you know constantly pushing me. Uh, the support Great. the support that Grizz Nation and the state of Montana gives me mm. um, has been a fuel uh, mm. for me for a lot of my a lot of my days mm-hmm. um, that things weren't going so well for me. Um, and so I it, it's it's awesome. I, I um, so you're all healed now. <clears throat> I, I mean, feel everything my, feels I've, good. You feel 100%? My body feels maybe better than it ever has. That's good. It's another one of those learning things along the way. You learn, you learn how to train. You learn uh, what you're, what, how, you know, how, how to rest, how to prepare, how to do all these things. And, and like I said, I'm an old man in the room now, so I, right. I've learned a few things along the way, and well, I just feel great. You said something important about being ready for camp because people, I don't think, realize, I don't think our listeners realize, he reports on the 28th. Right, of and on the 11th of August, 
he's going to be playing the Denver Broncos in the first exhibition game. Yeah. And they play with pads. I mean, they hit. People are trying to make the team. In some cases, exhibition games have harder tackling and harder competition maybe than even some regular season games because guys are trying to make to show off and make an impression. No doubt. I mean, I think one of the big things that the preseason brings out is is an intensity of um, someone's trying to take my job. You know, right, someone, right, someone's right. trying. I mean, I think I think the numbers get lost, but there's 90 guys right now uh, that that play for the Chicago Bears that are you know thinking that they're going to have a spot in the room. Right. And thinking, and it gets cut down to 53. Uh, before the season starts, so that's almost in half, uh, and so there's going to be uh, forty whatever, right. thirty seven guys who are just um, gone, you know, gone, unemployed, and some of and, them will make the looking. practice squad, but basically they're the yeah. rest of them are not going to be playing. Exactly, and so so that's why, like, like I said, that's why I can take time off and I can relax and I can do all those things. Uh, but I'll tell you when when the twenty seventh, twenty eighth, when training camp starts, um, I'll be ready to go and I'll be ready to. Uh, so which posi- what So what happens, do. and how do they determine what position he's playing? He's training for because he was you were special teams, right? Uh, yeah. But then you started to be a wide receiver midway through the season. Well, and, and special teams is a huge part of the game. It's very important. Right. I mean, it's it's. I mean, For a lot you, of the activity, action happens during no special doubt. teams play. No doubt. Um, but so the way the structure works is, for for m- most of the day, you're playing your offense or defense, right? And then you have a few uh, periods of special teams or whatever, and so. Guys that play offense and defense also play special teams. I see. And so and the way I look at it is the more I can do, um, the more the more I can get on the field, right. I'll do whatever it takes. And, and I, keep, I keep bugging my special teams coordinator, you know, send me down on some coverage teams. I want to I go hit somebody. I haven't tackled since college. So I, 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 I'll do whatever it takes, man. I'm excited. That's I, some looks. That's I, so cool. Yeah. What's that? You're getting looks the whole time. From whatever well, you have to. You, you have want to get as, more, as much exposure as you can. Oh, it's yeah. the stage. No, no doubt. For a lot of reasons. It's Not the great. least of which, which I think our listeners may not know, is that most, I'd say a majority, overwhelming majority of NFL players' contracts are not guaranteed. Let's take a quick break. Our guest is Mark Mariani. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back. <laughs> All right, we're back. Right, so we were just saying that most people don't realize that that, that contracts are mo- for most players are not guaranteed. You get a contract that's reported in the paper to be eight hundred thousand yeah. dollars, but you only maybe have eighty thousand guaranteed, or maybe nothing even on contract. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a common misunderstanding with with the NFL. Uh, and, and and to be honest, I. I don't quite get it. Uh, all the other major sports have turned away from that and, and gotten rid of that. Um, but no, ours are not guaranteed. Um, they are pretty one-sided for the most part, and right. so that's why that's why you know, like we talked about earlier, you got to show up every single day. Sure, you just, I mean, like because I've heard people just, say, well, you know, he's making a million bucks, so they cut him. He's got a million. No, no. you're out of work. You're out of work. And the paycheck stop coming. <laughs> yeah. What do you do? We don't want to know what you do, but well, it, you know, it's that's that's a hard part. I mean, the NFLPA is constantly trying to, you know, groom guys for that, get them ready right. because this is this is, you know, as awesome as it is, it goes so fast and it's such a small window right. in everyone's lives. I think the average is like three years or something, right. and that's a short short window, and you're done and you're playing and you've made you know however much money and then you're out, uh, you know, in 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 the real world and you gotta pick up the pieces, and a lot of guys have trouble with it. Right. Well, I mean, no no matter how things go, you have a great year, Jay Cutler finds you in every game, you have nine touchdowns, you know, by that, by, uh, you know, you make the Super Bowl, all that stuff happens. Sounds good. I like that. Yeah, and it's going to happen. I'm very (laughs) I'm very pressed. I love that crystal ball you got over there, Ernie. Let's go to Vegas, Ernie. But, but, even if all that happens, by the time you're 35, you're done, pretty oh, much. Oh, man, if I make it to 35, <laughs> wow, that's another I know. six. Ah, well, you know. So you're an old man by football terms, but you're just a young guy. No doubt. So have you thought a little bit about what you're going to do after after football is over? Yeah, absolutely. Can I, mean, I prepare you in the classroom appropriately well, for a career? Well, thank goodness for Arnie Sherman's uh, <laughs> business uh, international relations classes. Um, you know, it's something that I, I, I have thought about and I think about all the time. Um, I, like, like we touched on, I, I was a walk-on at Montana, and I didn't, you know, just – 
throw school aside and say I'm going to the NFL. So yeah. uh, I, I never studied. missed the class. I, yeah. I know you told me that. Yeah, it's amazing. It, yeah, I enjoyed anyway. it, man. I loved I loved Arnie's well, classes. Look, about, look, he's wearing an up top hat. Okay, so his play, his uh, teammate Colt Anderson started a whole that's line. Right. He, a whole he's, new brand. That's Do you it. have ideas like that that you can put to play now while you're? I'm going for ideas directly competing with up top. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not, at all. not at all. Not at all. No, <laughs> yeah, tell no. Up top is plug, plug, plug. Up top, up top. Uh, buy your up top. <laughs> no, uh, was that head wars this weekend, by right, the way. Yeah. Last um, weekend. Um, but, you know, it, I, so I was ready for the business world when I was finished school, and, right. and I've been on this phenomenal detour for a few years. But um, there are some things that I have in the works, and, and you know, I, I think I've been pretty smart with the money that I have made and, right. and, and have some cool things cook in. Um, I didn't see a Ford the Raptor out there, yeah, you know, that's yeah, tricked no, out or anything. I don't have that. any Lamborghinis in my, in my, in <laughs> my driveway. So. Maserati. Yeah. I, but uh, what but do no. you think you're going to do? Like, what are, what are some of the categories and things that you're looking at, like well, business wise? I, re- I really love real estate. Okay. Um, I have some really fun connections, um, you know, all over the place to do some development and some, you know, s- some um, in things Montana, in that or? area, it, all over the place. Yeah, Great. I mean, I would love to. I would love to do some stuff. Um, when I was in Nashville, um, I was extremely fortunate to shake a few hands in the music business. Um, I, I might, I might kick that around. Um, um, it's it's just it's you know we had work. your old roommate Austin yeah. Mullins on the show and he's he's he, developed a big uh, I don't know a, a I don't know I don't know what he told you but <laughs> if if he was modest he does he shouldn't have been because he is killing it yeah and no, he I know is he doing is. extremely he well and he it was so fun to have. He and I go in different paths and end up in Nashville together. We spent so much time together, and, and, and he is he is doing so well. Um, well, that should give you a great you know a great confidence because you know he was a gr- good Grizz football player yeah. certainly, well, and he wasn't able to move on to the next level, but he's he's really succeeded. Who is the guy now? Who is the preeminent developer, real estate developer, who was a former football great? You know this, don't you? This the there are a lot of them. That well, there are a lot of them, but Roger, Roger Staubach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Roger Staubach. Yeah. Right, he was the man. If if I could. If I could mod- if I could model my uh, post career after Roger Salvak, I'd be doing all right. Is I that think. real companies? What is what's the name of his company? I forget the name. I don't know, of his but I think he just. Sold but you've got a lot of guys that are something. associated with the Bears too that are doing a lot of development work yes. and people that are yeah. affiliated there. I mean, that's the thing is 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 you're gonna. I could sit and spout like my little ideas out um, I got all day for you to meet in Chicago. He's a developer, <laughs> Done. Let's I'm do it. serious. He, he does does it in but he, he does it in Wisconsin. And yeah. he's in Vegas. And the Dells. He's probably up doing the Dells. Yes, yeah, he makes a lot of money doing work. I was going to say, the wherever, wherever the money's at, we'll find it. No, exactly. but... Exactly. I, I mean, it... It's 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 fun to talk about. It's fun for me to sit and you know think about and, and, and to see what direction. But you're not. Uh, you didn't mention uh, you know sports broadcasting. You know a lot of guys want to stick around and stick. You know they want to stick around the industry. They yeah. want to stick around and, and they you know there's lots of openings. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's a cool business to get in. It's something you know I I know about and I have experience with. I've done a little bit of that also off the side, but. Uh, I don't know. It, it, Voice it's, of the Grizz. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I don't want to. See, I don't see you as Mick Holine sitting in the booth. I know. You know? We just like, had the new guy. They, they just replaced him. Yeah. Yeah, he was in last week. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. No, Mick Violet. is the greatest. But um, yeah, we'll see. It's, it's something. That's another thing that that I kick around. Um, I think it was. It was. It's one of those things that. I love, you know, thinking about the possibilities and see what's next. I don't want to step too far, sure. you know, into that bucket yes. because I want to do everything exactly. that I can now uh, to keep my career going and all that stuff. Well, you know, for but example, I, Car- you know, Carly's done personal training, right? Oh yeah. And you know, Dallas Neal opened, you know, was a former, you know, Grizz who played for Atlanta yep. Falcons, and you know, source. he has a he He's has doing a source. Really well. He's yep. doing well. I mean. You, no you and Carly could have your uh, business together. That sounds perfect. Yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll come to you, see if we can get some investors kicked Finance. up. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> Finance. I'm, I'm happy to work with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple perfect. of upstarts here in town. Yeah, yeah it'd be very yeah. good ups. No. So, so, so if somebody's going to come up to you and say, right off, what's your uh, prognosis uh, for the Bears? I know you're, you're you know, it, it's, it's the Bears. I know it's hard to, you know, to be unbiased. Team. But what, what do you think? Well, what have you added to the team that, that gives you greater confidence for this year? Well, it's it's it, take it with a grain of salt because everyone feels good about themselves right. this time of year. Sure. I mean, everybody mm-hmm. has their draft you picks and their free agent. Game. Yeah, we're all, yeah, we're all undefeated. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you what, we are so close um, to, to, to going in 
doing, you know, to doing big things. And if we can get a few things clicked in the right direction, we short up our defense. Uh, our the draft was great. Uh, if we can stay healthy, we got a great quarterback slinging the rock. I, I really think that we're going to go out and win the North this year. I mean, I I, I think we're going to be good. I don't want to sit come come here and say we're going to be sixteen and zero, but I'm telling you what, we're going to be we're going to be tough. We have weapons all over the field, uh, and like I said, our defense got some key players plugged in. Sure. And I'm I, I am personally I am super stoked about the things we're doing. And right. uh, that's is great. Kevin White healthy now? Because he was going to be a weapon last year. Kevin White. That's the thing. We basically got two first round draft picks this year. He's coming out and he is an absolute freak of nature. I can't yeah. wait to unleash him. He's he's an absolute animal, and. And uh, to have a guy like that, Alshon's back. I mean, all these things. You know, I, I we got a good group of young running backs, and I I'm just excited. I, I don't want to come on like I said and say no, we're no, going to win the Super be. Bowl, but I, I'm telling you what, don't well, don't the, bet against us. We're well, gonna... one of the unintended consequences of having injuries, a lot of injuries last year, is guys got experience and got out yeah. there. No doubt, and I mean, that'll you had you know I mean you had twenty two receptions in the field late in the season. Yeah, and that, that gave you that gave not just you the experience because you had experience, but it gave Jay Cutler some you know confidence that he could make the throw to you and you would hold on to the ball and, and advance it. Yeah, I mean I think I'm picking up up where I left off, and and everyone else you know that that kind of filled those roles last year toward the end that got all that experience yeah. is only making us better, um, and we've added a lot of young guys and. Like I said, I, I I would predict I would predict a really good year. We're we're definitely going to go after that North uh, NFC North championship this well, year. Well, it's about time for the Bears fans. Right? I know, they, they I know. Want it, they we're doing it. it, Bears. We got you covered. Yeah. So now, with uh, are the other Chicago teams supportive of you guys? Like, do you see like ball players from the Bulls or the um, what you call it, the uh, Red or not the Red Wings, yeah. Blackhawks, Cubs, Blackhawks, White Cubs. Sox? Do they come to your games? You know what? I, I I don't know that. I don't know that. Chicago is so big uh, that I don't know if they're there. We I've crossed paths with a few guys in, at events and stuff, but um, you know I became a Chicago fan. I mean I'm yes. a I'm a band I'm a, <laughs> I'm a band I'll take it I'm a bandwagon Cubs fan. Why are you right. bandwagon? Well, oh, come on. But I moved to the city when when we moved in. Uh, you know all these the Cubs fans who have had all the the years of yes heartache a hundred years and, and, then, <laughs> and then our first year. You know, I probably went to 12 or 13 games last year, and they, uh, you know, are the best team in the NL and all this stuff. And so I'm like, what do you mean there's heartache? I don't get it. Right, well, they're the best team in baseball, <laughs> period, now. I know, You're now they're the, they're the best team. Period. Oh, and yeah. so that's going really well, and I'm still I'm still pretty big on my Nashville Predators, so I can't be a Black Hawks fan. Right. But, uh, so how does it feel to have Katie in town as a lawyer? I mean, she's working for a big law firm. She's living in Chicago. That was fortuitous. That wasn't planned. And she's killing it. Yeah, we... we sister, we, right? Yes. We, okay, good. Yeah, my sister graduated. Graduated uh, from here, another from the one University of our of Montana. students. Okay, uh, went to law school at Notre Dame, and then ended up in Chicago. And we actually went up and visited her a few times okay. during the summer, you know, just to hang out in Chicago. Oh, the city's cool. <clears throat> and then little did we know, two months yeah, later, yeah. we'd be living there, and she's ten minutes away. And my parents love it. They're right, there. you can knock off two kids at once. They're there. They stay. You know, they stay a couple nights with me. A couple, you know, back and forth. They're just nomads now. But um, it's been great, and she's doing really well. I'm super proud of her. She's she's just awesome, and she's kicking butt down there. She's right downtown, right in River North, you know, just in the thick of the city. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit out of the city where our facility is at, but it's been awesome. It's been really cool to have the whole family there. And, and you know. let, me, let me ask you about this. How accepting are the other girlfriends and wives of new of players when they come to town, when they, they come in? Is there, is there like a, a sisterhood or a sorority Kind of atmosphere among the wives. <laughs> among the wives, yeah, I, I, there there is among the wives. They uh, where they, is it going? They no, try. No, no just, they they, they try to, to they she, get the Chris wives. Carly comes from Nashville. A fraternity, I got it. A sorority. Well, it's a sorority. That's what I said. Right. I'll tell you the, the wives. The wives are great. They have events and they do all these things and together and whatever. I'll tell you what they don't really like is new girlfriends every time. So <laughs> I think I think that comes up a lot is because it's like some. You mean, some, you mean the single guys changing well, girls? Well, and then the, and then they just Chicago keep, Bears. and then they just keep you know there's there may be a new new girl every time and and the, so the wives kind of i've seen where the wives kind of just like you well know. then they must have never liked Derek jeter right in new york because every <laughs> time was a new, it was exactly. a new girl <laughs> but no you know everyone it's funny because everyone you think when you come to a new team that you're 
kind of out of the loop and, and the new kid on the block. But in reality, in our business, there's so much turnover. There's so many people in the same boat. There's so many people, you know, it's like the first day of summer school or something. Right. All these people come in, first day, same thing. Well, they don't call it camp for nothing, right? I mean, they do it, not. Is, it, it is like camp, right? Yeah, and and mean, then some people stay on and some people go off. You yeah. Know, go off. Yeah, it's, it's easy. I mean, yeah. it's easy. It's just this constant merry-go-round. You get on, you get off, whatever. Who knows? It's, it's, it's unbelievable that you have such a positive uh, attitude about all of this stuff because you need that. Yeah. Because the pressure cooker, you know, just, you know, goes on. And then you're, you know, as we talked last time, after, after your season's over, whether it's at the end of the regular season or the playoffs or whatever, you know, you're, you're gone for months. No, and no. you're not being paid, and I you don't know what's. And if you're he free needs agent, to have you Carly don't know what's working on another business while he's a bear. Okay, sure. Hey. We need an up top for him. Well, the other thing is, the other <laughs> I, thing is I saw the I saw. Wait a second, I saw Colt's whole family and whole spread over at a country concert we had this past weekend. Yeah. Everybody's in. His brother is running it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, his brother's running the show. Hey, it's hey he's, he's doing well with it. Yeah, yeah we're all, we're all in too. I'm a sales rep. Man. <laughs> Are you a sales rep? I mean, unofficially. Uh, right, you're unofficially. an ambassador. Yeah, right. exactly. I'm an ambassador. No, we're all we're all in. We're well, all in. Well, he's gonna need top. one because you know he's only has a one year contract. No, but yeah, <laughs> the thing though, well, he's gonna need one. But the good thing about Mark is he can have a business right that's right. working and making him money while he's sleeping and while he's training for right. the bear. Now we're talking. I mean, I let, let's Arnie, go. Let's on. let's. Let's get this Kale. Let's get this That's pot right. turning. Mark man. I'm ready. Well, we'll, Kale. We want to first to focus right now on having a great season. Yes, good you point. deserve no, no. one. You've put Thank the you. time and effort in to have one. Thank you got a quarterback and, and an offensive coach and a, and a wide receivers coach that has confidence in you. You made the plays. You made them on third down. I mean, if you look at the funnel of pressure on you from start, starting off as a walk on to being <laughs> the third down receiver, what's more pressure in a, in a football game than third down and seven or eight or whatever? And you're the go to guy. Yeah. I mean, at, there's only the only more pressure than that is in, in sports is either the the field goal kicker or <laughs> or the uh, or the closer in a baseball game right coming in with bases loaded in the yes. ninth. I, mean, I don't I don't I, yeah I don't mind I don't mind if he uh, continue if Jay continues <laughs> just to build find you. yeah just keep firing find the ball you. man keep firing the ball I don't whatever it takes man just keep throwing well, it my way. Watch I'm hey look I'm a convert I'm now a Bears fan I yes we'll take I okay? follow I follow Mark I'm glad I'm, I know I, you do I do I am glad however he's not with the Titans anymore so I don't have to be a Titans fan. <laughs> well yeah you don't well, have to say anything about no no yeah saying. I was gonna say there's a lot there's a lot. To uh, and if the and if for some up, reason the Bears get, get stupid right. Right. and something happens with you, right. we right. pray that you go to the Giants. The Giants. <laughs> Arnie's got us all of his New York my stuff. Team too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Oh my God, we both are. There By you the go. way, I got this great T-shirt the other day. It said "Giant with Montana Roots," and it's a helmet. That has roots in Montana. It's a great T-shirt. Right, they have them for every team now. They Just, do. Yes, I, they that's do. Okay, I'm that could be your new business. Well, nice. there's a nice kinship, right, between Chicago and uh, and uh, Montana, anyway. Right. right? Yeah. Yes. So that's good. It's a good exchange. No doubt. I mean, it's funny being from a, in a small market like Tennessee for four years, and then coming to Chicago where it's totally flipped upside down. It's this the biggest. It is the biggest um, NFL market uh, in 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 the NFL because. Because New York splits, right, and because now I think LA might have it. I don't know, but anyways, it's one of the biggest, and the Bears Nation man spreads all, so Very far. Very wide, yes. We it is so. Well, it's the fun only sports team that had a skit, ongoing skit on Saturday Night Live, right? The uh, Bears. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it true. Is, it is. You know. So, quick question: So, if any of our Montana natives and friends want to visit you in Chicago <laughs> and see you play, no, let's see you play yeah. and go for a home game. Yeah. What are some of your recommendations? Where should they stay? Where should they eat? Oh, Oh my gosh! Come on, get there now. I'll tell you what. If you what's your favorite steak place? Steakhouse Chicago Cut, no doubt about it. Right on the river, can't okay. beat it. Okay. Favorite Italian? Oh man, Mark's picks. By the way, we're I, here. I've I've tried a ton, um, but the place that we keep going back to is RPM Italian. Okay. It's not like it's not it's less traditional than I is like my favorite. In, okay. My favorite in Nashville like spaghetti is spaghetti and meat the balls, right? Savarinos, man. Yeah. That was in Nashville. It was like the best home cooked stuff. Really, this is a little bit more um, mainstream Italian, but we always go back. Um, and then I've tried little hot spots around the city um, for Italian. But and where's your favorite pizza? Do you eat Lou Malnati's? Or do you Lou like Malnati's, man. I Every love time. Lou's. 
dish. I'll tell you what. Is I, that right? I yeah. haven't. That's one thing I haven't gotten into yet is the deep dish. We go to yeah. Gino's East and get those like four inch thick slices of pizza. They're unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, but you can only have one. They're so. I mean, they're so dense yeah, they're and like so sauce pies. I mean, it's, exactly. it's it's unbelievable. But Carson's for ribs. You ever go to Carson's? I haven't been to Carson's. Carson's yet. is a pretty good. What's your favorite Port, place? Portillo's is a Chicago classic, and yeah. you, it's steak sandwiches and hot dogs, and I mean, oh, it's a little sandwiches. less. It's a little less. Uh, it's a high. It's more high cal, I would say. So, <laughs> but, so is the food in Chicago at training camp better than the food in Nashville or not? What do you think? Oh yeah, I the, <laughs> I, 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 I I love I love Nashville yeah. and I love the Titans. Um, but and we're not but, criticizing. We're just making a comparison. Yes, yeah, but um, comparative. But, but uh, the Bears take care of us pretty well. I mean, William I mean, the Refrigerator Perry didn't get his name because he was eating <laughs> cornflakes. Yeah, no, they they do they do a lot of things. Um, really well. I think, like I said, I think it trickles down from Coach Fox, but they, they've they really, um, like with the sports psych, the nutrition, the, all the other stuff off the field, Good stretching stuff. and massaging and all this stuff that they've added to our program um, that is really, it'd be really hard for me to find a team that I think does it better than what Foxy does because he just is so into that stuff. So right. we, we have it pretty good. And training camp's what, only 60 miles or so away from uh, down in Chicago, right? Yeah, training camp is in Bourbon A, it's called. It's it's out there. Um, but actually, we have a shortened camp this year because we're going to New England um, to scrimmage them for a week. Mm-hmm. So we, that'll cut our training camp basically well, that'll be half. fun. That'll yeah, be fun. Yeah, that'll be exciting. I'm, I'm, I have never played. Um, You've never played with stadium. underinflated footballs before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I heard they're easier to catch, so. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to get an edge. Easier to throw, easier, easier to, to throw. Catch. Exactly. For Bill, hey, Bill Simmons' show starts this week. Are you yeah. looking forward to that? Yes, I am. I am. All right. Well, it's good to see. I think we should wrap it up. I think. Yep. We're Mark, the, we've taken a lot of your time. You're in town guest. for charity event. You're in town to see your family. We really appreciate you stopping by, and it's always great to see you. Thanks for having me, guys. Go Bears. Anytime. Go yeah, Bears. Go Bears. Man. We'll see you during, go Grizz. We'll see you during the season. All right. Take care. Thanks, go Mark. Grizz. Thank you for listening to What Do You Know? I can't wait for the next show, Scott. I'm excited too, Arnie. If you'd like to suggest a guest, send me an email at scottrichman at townsquaremedia.com. We'll see you next week. And thanks for listening to News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, 1015 FM, and newstalkkgvo.com.